Once the platforms and tools finish installing, the SDK Manager window will appear something like what you see here. And at this point, the next step is to prepare your Android virtual devices that you'll use for testing purposes. Now, throughout these videos, we actually used three different Android virtual devices, one that emulated the Google Nexus 4 phone, one that emulated the Google Nexus 7 small tablet, and one that emulated the Google Nexus 10 large tablet. And you can create as many different AVDs as you wish for testing your apps on different uh, hardware. Now the thing again that you need to keep in mind is that not everything can be tested accurately in the emulator and also the emulator can be quite slow for certain types of apps uh, making it very difficult to work with so if you have an Android device available to you that you can test on that would be the best possible experience for you and when we get to lesson one and show you how to test drive an app in an AVD we will also talk about how to test drive an app on an actual device so the next step is to just close the SDK manager window here and in the ADT tools bundle inside of Eclipse you can then go to the window menu and select Android virtual device manager to display the AVD manager that you now see here up on the screen and you'll notice that there's two tabs one called Android virtual devices and one called device definitions and you can select from a bunch of predefined device definitions if you would like which is actually what we did for the purpose of uh, these live lessons videos so you can see here there's a Nexus 4 that's pre-configured there's a Nexus 7 that's pre-configured and if we scroll down a little bit actually it's right here there's also a Nexus 10 that's pre-configured so what I can do is go ahead and select Nexus 4 and click create AVD at this point it displays a window for me in which I can configure various options for that AVD you'll notice there's a warning down here that says for Windows users emulating uh, RAM that's greater than 768 megabytes may fail so one of the things that you're going to want to do if you're a Windows user is change this RAM from 1907 down to a maximum of 768 and as far as the other options that you're seeing here uh, the keyboard option allows you to use the keyboard on your computer for entering information into the Android virtual device the skin option when selected is going to display when you run an Android virtual device uh, controls on the right side of the AVD window that allow you to interact with the device itself um, if you want to have your device simulate having a camera you can select whether to have a front and a back camera right now they're both set to none because none of the apps uh, in this live lessons video are going to uh, take pictures but if you do want to go ahead and test that functionality you can make a selection to emulate a camera or to use an actual webcam if you would like uh, as far as the RAM and heap sizes go, uh, I would set them as shown here if you're a Windows user or leave them alone if you're on Linux or Mac OS. The internal storage uh, is how much extra memory you want to allocate for storing apps within the Android virtual device and you can even emulate having a secure digital SD card in your device and you can specify how big that should be as well. Uh, as far as the snapshot and use host GPU options, uh, snapshot allows you every time you run an Android virtual device and then shut it down to take a snapshot of the current state of the Android virtual device and that can actually make it faster to relaunch the device in the future and if you check off use, ho use host GPU if it's possible to do so on your platform it will use the graphics processor to help speed up AVD performance so at this point you can click OK and it will go ahead and create that AVD for you and now you can see in our Android virtual devices tab that we have 
an AVD, an Android virtual device called AVD for Nexus 4 by Google. And we can repeat that process twice for the Nexus 7 here. So I'll go ahead and create an AVD for that. Again, it's going to warn Windows users to change that RAM to 768. So I'll do that and click OK to create that AVD. And then finally, I'll go back to the Device Definitions tab and create one for the Nexus 10 device as well. And one more time on the RAM for that device because I am running on Windows. So uh, as you can see in the Device Definitions window, there are many other uh, devices that are shown here. Um, when you're starting to emulate devices from other manufacturers, sometimes those manufacturers will provide pre-configured AVD configurations, so you should check the developer sites for whatever devices you have. Uh, if not, you can grab the closest available match from these pre-configured devices. So for example, if your phone has approximately a 4.7 inch screen, then and, and it has um, this pixel density, then you could select that and then configure the device um, appropriately to match whatever actual hardware you're trying to emulate. Now, uh, over in Android Studio, unfortunately, through the configure option, it does not provide you the AVD manager. So if you want to get to the AVD manager in Android Studio, you actually have to open up the main window and to do that you're going to need at least a project to work with. So over in Android Studio I'm just going to click new project here and it's going to give me a pre-configured project window uh, with a bunch of settings in it which we'll talk about in much more detail in lesson two. For now I'm just going to go ahead and hit next, next, next and finish just to create a sample project so I can show you the Android Studio menus. So at this point, what's happening here is Android Studio is configuring a new project, and as soon as that's done, I'll be able to show you how to access the AVD Manager inside of Android Studio. As you can see, it takes a little bit of time to uh, get the IDE up and running. Uh, initially. So once it is up and running, uh, you'll see that there are uh, a number of options across the top of the uh, title bar here. You'll also see that it gives you this tip of the day, which I'll close here for the moment. Uh, now, there are um, a couple of different ways to access the uh, SDK manager and AVD manager when you're talking about Android Studio. We showed you that initial screen in Android Studio for accessing the Android uh, AVD Manager. Let's take a look at how we get to the SDK Manager. So let me get rid of this uh, window here. Now, once the IDE finally finishes loading, you'll notice that all of these icons have become active. And here you can see the SDK Manager icon. And to the right of that, uh, I'm sorry, to the left of that is the AVD Manager icon. So in Android Studio, you can click that icon, whoops, let's try that again, to launch the AVD Manager. And once the AVD Manager gets displayed, you'll notice here that it already has the three AVDs that I had configured from the ADT Bundle IDE uh, showing here, and that's because those AVDs that you create get stored with your user account, regardless of whether you're using Android Studio or the ADT bundle. So uh, if you're going to run both IDEs, you do not need to separately configure the AVDs for Android Studio. However, if you are in fact going to only run Android Studio, then you'll want to go through the same steps I just showed you over in the ADT Tools bundle to create those Android virtual devices. And again, you can use the pre-configured device definitions tab to select the devices you want to create. By the way, if you do click the new button from the Android virtual devices tab, you still have the ability to select from those many pre-configured uh, virtual devices if you would like.
and then you can also give your own name for the virtual device and configure everything as necessary.